previously on the Great Ace Attorney 2 Resolve. She's just gonna come in one day and be like, Mr. Naruhoto, I've gone ahead and painted in the other eye of the Daruma. Wow, does that mean I'm finally a finally attorney? That's right. However, I've hidden the Daruma and buried it somewhere in the backyard. What? You're gonna have to find it using this shovel. You mean the spade? No, it's a shovel. Right, Mr. Naruhoto? Ah, uh, fine. It's a shovel. Yeah! Now tell me where my Duruma is. That's for you to find, Mr. Naruhoto. I've won the war. That's all I care about. <laughs> and now back to leg at people. Help! Sneako B. Back with some more of the Great Ace Attorney 2 Resolve. We last left off. We basically just took a moment to sort of stop and collect our thoughts uh, of all the crazy shit that happened a lot the previous case. Uh, and also we met with uh, uh, Professor Mikotoba as well as... Uh, the uh, Japanese Aji from this period, who is actually a character in this game, which by the way, yes, the majority of comments from last episode, let's just go ahead and read it. Let's just go ahead and read it. Let's go ahead and read the one that was probably maybe the, the, the relatively the nicest. Elena Safira, who last episode said, the judge in Ace Attorney Investigations has never been, ha had a name or identity. Pray to discourtesy on Nico's behalf for neglecting Justine Courtney's existence. He must have triggered the goddess of law's wrath. <laughs> Okay, listen, all right? It's not so much that I forgot Judge Courtney, all right? Really. But I definitely didn't I definitely didn't explain or clarify myself well enough. So what I meant by like a judge having a character. The thing about Justine, all right, is that she took place only in the Investigation 2 uh universe, right? And in that game, despite her being a judge, we didn't ever really know her in the courtroom, right? It's not like she was up there face word fronting us uh and like had been in previous games and showed up a few times, and then we saw her in Ace Attorney Investigations 2 and they fleshed out her character. No, she was basically, she existed in that game and she's only ever been like seen in this similar style as every other character that you interact with in that game. Whether they be witnesses, whether they be other prosecutors, defense lawyers, cops, whatever. It was basically just, it was the same thing, except she was also a judge. What I kind of meant was a, basically someone that it was unusual to see a character that was acting as a judge, has been acting as a judge, and actually see them do things outside of that courtroom and have an actual character that's like, oh, I have a name and uh, a story and other things. But also, you have experienced me in the courtroom and see me do stuff as a judge. It's just super weird. It's, it's like fucking whiplash. I mean, could you imagine old man judge? Like suddenly he comes, like we see him outside the courtroom and he's actually got like a name and he's like, let me tell you about my deep backstory. And maybe I don't know those grandkids that he fucking keeps bringing up all the time. Again, he did show up in Ace Attorney Investigations 1, sort of like that, but also not really because really didn't go into much detail. He was basically just a witness or a side character to something and not a major focus or super plot relevant. But that's kind of what I meant, all right? So no, no offense to Justine Courtney, okay? I still love her to pieces, but there's a big difference between what they did with her as opposed to other judge characters. That said, I didn't really explain myself very well, so uh, that's also on me. But Elena, thank you so much for uh, your, your very friendly clarification. Holy shit, that was literally like over half the comments from last episode. That was fucking great to see. And it's that reason you are comment of the day. Yeah, it was kind of hard to find a comment of the day last episode, to be perfectly frank, because the majority of the comments were just talking about that. Oh, and then the other half of the comments were, of course, and this is definitely my fuck up. Uh, Cosmo was not poisoned. That's not how he had seemingly died. He was pushed by Nicolina. He tripped over the cat, and he hit his head on the bedpost and seemingly broke his neck. That's what happened. And I'm going to tell you right fucking now, I legit do not remember that whatsoever. <laughs> I, I really do not remember that. Holy shit. Like that, that, that one I'm like legit blinking out on. And it kind of shows how much of that case, like I feel like the actual means of murder in that case, at least to me, did not have a sticking effect. Like that shit did not stay with me at all. Oh, I do remember Nicolina. I remember that she was the one responsible. I remember her pretending to be a guy with a beard and then, you know, mas a master. Oh, a little Russian girl. She was a ballet dancer. She escaped her country, blah, 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 blah. I remember 
Kasugi's body, who they've already shown like a billion times, riding in blood and so forth. But I definitely did not remember actually what his means of death was. I really thought it was poison. He has to say there was a, there was a moment right where like the the sailors themselves had been drugged and put to sleep because there was something had been put in the chicken. But that aside, there was pretty much no trace of poison uh, in that case. So I guess that was just not like a. Something that really stuck with me in that case. Maybe just part of it is the fact that I really was not expecting to see Cosmo again. So I guess I wasn't expecting to have to remember how he died. <laughs> Cause I'll be honest too. I mean, if I look back at a lot of these cases, am I supposed to remember, unless it's like somebody was literally fucking stabbed, you know? And that's like, there's literally images of him being stabbed and having a knife in his gut and blood oozing out. So it's gonna be hard to, kind of hard to remember exactly how a person from a specific case was murdered if you're looking backwards, even if it was only one game ago. <laughs> that said though, this shit's definitely not making me look good. Man, I should stop talking about previous cases because clearly I don't remember anything, right? Early 30s, the still, he's kicking in already. Fuck me. But yeah, uh, I legit have no excuse for that one. That one was definitely on me. Oh, uh, you guys did also fill me in. Apparently the Redheaded League is actually a reference to another actual Holmes uh, uh, case from the uh, original stories. Though it's seemingly maybe maybe more glossed over in this one. I don't know. It does seem like it's probably going to play into something significant, right? Seeing as in that little intro movie, we literally saw a whole bunch of characters with red hair. But it's it's kind of hard to see yet because we haven't we haven't even gotten to like a murder or like a crime to solve or even have a client to defend, which kind of likes me to believe we're probably not even going to finish the this investigation this episode I, I bet this we still got two more episodes before we even get to a to a trial oh and you guys did also say i should apparently try to present the redheaded newspaper article to just random people uh for funny responses so which uh actually along those lines let's go ahead and hop to here and let's just try it look yeah the redhead leak it's not something we could ever aspire to is it but i'm determined to try your hair is completely black, though. Beautiful, but black. Aw. Perhaps you know that in our homeland, this color of hair has traditionally been described as green black. Really? Green black? It sounds a lot like a contradiction, if you ask me. So some people clearly see it as green in Japan, even though it's black. In which case, I'm full of hope something similar may happen here in Britain. That level of optimism is something I should learn a lesson from. Aw, I love, I love these characters so fucking much, dude. I love Susta so much. God damn, man. She's so sweet. I, I still like that. That was a cute thing. He, he actually did compliment her. He's like, beautiful hair. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's kind of hard to tell, honestly, if the game is really trying to set any kind of romantic insinuations between the two characters. Because to be perfectly honest, I think, I think it's more of a, just a me thing. I, ever interaction between them has been pretty platonic i mean let's see i mean i know naruhoto i know she's she's 16 right uh we've had this conversation like a billion fucking times at this point um yeah and i think naruhoto is like in his early 20s but i mean it's fucking early japan they don't give a shit <laughs> i don't know man i don't know may it still be weird but i still find them to be very cute together but again, I think it's very much a me thing. I don't really think it's the game trying to set it up. I feel like we need that though. We don't ever see that in these Ace Attorney games. We don't see some good like, like romantic shit. You know, I mean, Lord knows every other previous game has been the same way with, with other characters like fucking Phoenix and Maya, which to be fair, that was only, I don't know, that would have been weird. I, that always, that felt like, yeah, that wouldn't have worked very well. And obviously Apollo and Apollo and Trucy definitely want to work for reasons, which I'm not going to say because I don't, just in case no one's played those other games, but yeah, definitely would not be a good idea. I guess there's Edgeworth and Phoenix. That's some kind of good gay shit that, that maybe could have happened. They, de they definitely probably put out more uh, insinuations than like Phoenix and anybody else in the game. I don't know. Was there a thing between Athena and Blackwell? Was that not really no like no everything in this game is always kind of like really platonic like nobody just has any sort of sexual like desires or love making or romancing or kissing or even just a desire to be like you know girlfriend and boyfriend none of that shit they're like ah fuck you all right save that shit for your fan fictions and your vanilla hentai you bitches it's not enough of it man i need, I need more of it okay because after all i do start shipping these characters and i just i wanted that shit to actually like come to fruition have good stuff good stuff you know like the love hotel with shuichi and kade that's probably the closest i've ever gotten all right to that shit happening 
that shit still sits with me even if that was still technically in a lot of ways his own fan fiction but that shit happened okay i don't care what anyone says those two fucked like monkeys all right and i just couldn't be happier anyway i think i'm getting a little off topic here let's go ahead and present this now now that uh, things have changed i stay up late to mend that for you the other day mr arhoto uh thank you you did a really seamless job you're very welcome it's all in a day's work for your judicial assistant oh that's cute this is actually really cute it's actually there's a lot of really great fluff text in this game i know i've said that multiple times as well but but there also seems to be a, a lot of like you would expect just a repeat but it's actually like new dialogue with the outlier being apparently holmes's suite with where most of the dialogue there like fluff dialogue ends up being the same but um a lot of times you get things like this where it's actually following up what i mentioned before where i there's actually a thread here that is sticking out or whatever and she got upset at you right so now she's following up saying that she's mended it the only thing is i accidentally dropped it into the theme themes yesterday and now it rather smells oh no oh now she's gonna get big angie again then better take better care of it please it's all going so well until i ruined it Ugh. Why did you say anything? Okay. <laughs> it's so cute, man. I love it. This character's so Dorabu. Okay, so uh, we picked up a case now for a missing husband to, now surprisingly, one of the jurors, right? Because we got to keep reusing these characters again. Uh, so we're headed to, so we'll make sure these other places are all good. The prison, prison governor's office. Because apparently this guy was a warden at uh, Barclay Prison. Barclay Prison is on the outskirts of London, backing onto a lonely burial ground. Its four high outer walls loomed quietly before us in the fog. Having requested a meeting, we were shown to the governor's office in the watchtower. Oh my god, that fucking clock. Holy shit, dude. Wow, that is a morbid clock. <laughs> what? I... That I wouldn't even be able to work, dude. I'd be sitting that staring that shit all day, I'd be like, what the hell? And every time you do, a little squirt of ketchup comes out the bottom. <laughs> uh, November first, Markley Prison, Governor's Office. Holy shit! Look at that bird. Oh my god! Look at that guy's backside and his hair. Duh. Well, you big beefy man, huh? I gotta get a look at your face, but I I think it's probably gonna be something like this. Place is full of hardened criminals. A Kenna, hey, a Kenny. Oh, oh, okay. Thank you. Oh, dude, I love phonetics so much, man. It makes this, it makes doing some accents so much better. So this would be, is it Scottish or is it Irish? A Kenny deny it. Uh, I think it's Scottish. I think, or no, maybe it's Irish. Fine, whatever. Anyway, this place full of hard and criminals. Actually, no, it, this is Irish. Yes, this is, because I've seen Outlander. <laughs> I can't even remember the last time a civilian was done here. And you don't even want to talk to an inmate, but to me. Damn, wow, you're cool as fuck already. Fucking Armstrong here. Do you ken who I am? Yeah, definitely Irish. Do you ken who I am? I'm the governor, Barry Caden. Hmm? Oh, yes, it's a pleasure. I'm Rianoski Narhoto, defense lawyer. In an Easterner, I see. What does that mean? Yes, I'm a visiting student of law from the Empire of Japan. Japan! Did you say Japan? Uh, yes? Well, there's no point in your kind in here, laddie. Maybe you should try the prison next door, eh? I didn't notice another prison next door, sir. <laughs> anyway, we came to ask you some questions about- I don't even like to be so direct, but- I have no intention of speaking with the likes of you suspicious-looking Easterners. Damn! Racist much? Now get out of my hair. Get out. So as soon as he finds out that we're from Japan, he reacts like this. Great. That surely means. I think it's because of the professor case. Yeah, you think so too. Ten years ago, Genshin Soki, also known as the professor, was incarcerated at this prison. And then after his execution, he apparently re-emerged from his grave in the cemetery behind the prison. It's interesting, I like where it's going, where it's not even so much that his father is necessarily like this crazy psychotic killer, though clearly, I mean, to, to go that far is still, man, it's some homicide, baby. But he's it does seem very much that he is was trying to dish out his own vigilante justice, right? And the fact that it ties so closely to uh, what someone out the Reaper is kind of like, mmm, eyebrow raising. I, I might have known. 
You sniffing around about that case, aren't you? Your agents, eh? Part of the professor's great web, no doubt. No, not at all. We just... Get going with you before I punch your lights out. We're going, we're going. Jesus, he's twirling those, those handcuffs or keys. Clear the ghost that killer still haunts this place. We're not getting, going to get anywhere here. Unless we can somehow prove to this man that there's nothing suspicious about us. Governor Caden. What are you thinking, Miss Susito? I feel sure that name came up in conversation recently somewhere. I was wondering if whoever mentioned him might have some ideas to help us. Come to think of it, I have the same feeling. So I'm guessing uh, nothing we do like, hey, look at this. Governor Caden, could I at least show you this? It's how can one man turns back on you on your, on a, in a single conversation. Cool. Nice talking with you. So I guess the Great Waterloo Hotel. You're going to meet with Professor Mikotoba, who's just chilling out here with his teen crumpet. Hello, sir. Wait, is is the judge around? No, just you. It's Professor Mikotoba over there. Ah, hello, you two. I was just taking a moment to catch up on the world now that I'm unpacked. But where's Judge Shigoku? Yes, he's not the relaxing sort. He's taking himself off to pay respects to all the legal bigwigs. Having only just arrived in the country today, goodness, he is full of energy. Uh, Professor, you mentioned something before about how you'd known the prison governor of Barclay Prison. Oh, Governor Caden, you mean. So it is the same man. Father, we must speak with the governor. But he refused to talk to us. He said we were suspicious Easterners. Well, you are pretty suspicious. Yeah, I know. Well, I'm sure if I accompanied you, it would be a very different story. No, oh, would you? That would be wonderful. If you have time now. Sadly, as you can see, I'm very busy at the moment. <laughs> what? He's fucking with us, right? Busy drinking coffee in a comfortable settee? Now, now, I have rather a lot to prepare for tomorrow. No. Oh. Oh, oh sorry. I didn't say out loud, did I? <laughs> oh, oh, come on. Fuck you, dude. Come on. Just go over there. We can instantly teleport anyway. You Mikotobas are alarmingly good at reading people's thoughts. No, you're just really bad at hiding them. Or it could be that you, Narodos, are alarmingly bad at hiding your thoughts. Let's not fall out now. I have an idea. What's he writing in that piece of paper? Here's a letter of introduction for you. Hopefully when he sees my name, he'll change his tune. Ah, thank you. Hey, all right. On behalf of Preston Mikotobita, Governor Caden, hopefully now he'll be willing to talk to us. Good luck then. You're gonna need it. Guy's kind of a dick. We know. Professor Mikotoba's wonderful handwriting, doesn't he? This dark-suited young man is not in the least bit untrustworthy. Is this me or does that make me sound extremely untrustworthy? I do wish he'd at least call you a nice young man. Really not sure that would help. Anything on the back? Of course it is. There's always something on the back of these pieces of paper, right? Blackbird line. Oh, looks like this is some sort of steamship ticket. The SS Gross, first class cabin 001. Yokohama departure, 11th of September, London arrival, 1st November. Ah, that's the boat that Professor Mikotoba and Judge Jigoku came on from Japan, isn't it? Yes, I think it called it Dunkirk on the north coast of France for a night before finally arriving in Dover. I think it's been almost a year since we arrived in Dover on the SS Buria. Seems a shame not to keep your ticket as a memento of your trip, don't you think? Yes, I agree. I might, I, I have mine safely in my diary. And I keep mine in my wallet, so I have it with me at all times. Oh, well, that's strange. Where could it have gone? Are you like this on purpose, Mr. Naruhoto? Did I imagine it, or was that comment accompanied by a little sigh? Hmm. Interesting. I wonder, maybe the fact that it's written on the back of a steam ticket is significant for... Uh, getting the guy I trust us as well. So that proves that it was... That he's here, maybe. Because I, I, by itself, it probably wouldn't necessarily insinuate that. I, I mean, unless he knows his handwriting or something. I'm trying to think, like, would it actually play into some larger case uh, as a whole? That seems kind of unusual. 
We can tell by you've been killing people on the side. I'll never tell. All right, back we go. All right, here we go. Are we friends now? You just cast your eyes over this, Governor Caden. What's this then? You can't even pull the wool over my eyes. You're good for nothing, Japanese student. Mikotoba. That. The young jock from the forensics laboratory. That's Miko. That's Mikotoba. Yes, exactly him. That's this one's daddy. Oh dear. Perhaps I should have said something sooner. I am using Mikotoba's daughter, Susito. Jinx! You're the young man's daughter! And you didn't think to mention there before! I... I do apologize. Aye, well, you best take a seat then. Can I offer you a cup of tea, perhaps? And didn't he forget to t try one of the wee handcuff biscuits. Ha 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 ha! And now suddenly he's a sweetheart. Even though his face does not change. <laughs> it's so tiny compared to him. Your father's influence is nothing short of amazing. I'm bitterly regretting not announcing who I was from the, the outset now. <laughs> so then, what can I do for you then? You, you, you hen? Really? Wait. I'm guessing, is he saying for you hen? He's probably saying then, right? How does then get shortened to hen? I thought it would have been like the. Is he still gonna make a eh, the? Or is he saying, or is he calling us a hen? Like a term of endearment. Are we hens to him, this great man? I'm, am I thinking about this too much? Well, we're currently investigating a case. It's one of your warders, you see. He's gone missing. Missing? That's right. It's surely been reported to you as well, being the prisoner, the prison governor. I haven't heard nothing of the sort. There's no missing persons in my prison. Oh. But how can that be? It's Mr. Dali Vigil, your chief warder. Eh? Vigil? That's right. His wife came to us and asked us to investigate his disappearance. Let's skip the part about him only going missing yesterday for now. Clear that means something to him. Would you be so kind as to tell us what you know, sir? Aye. Aye, of course. Before we do that, let's go around your insane office. Like, what the fuck, dude? An axe, a hunting rifle, and four pairs of handcuffs. I must have been just to the side of that clock. That's a dawning collection. Aye, there's a story behind every one of those. You mean, the rifle was a famous killer's murder weapon, and the axe was wielded by an infamous executioner, and the handcuffs were once used to immobilize a fierce four-legged beast when it was arrested? I think you're in the realms of fantasy now, Mr. Aroto. Not those kinds of stories, Jimmy. <laughs> Jimmy. That axe was the one I used to chop down the cherry tree in my house. Mrs. Caden wasn't a best pleased. Ha! <sighs> Still, that's some George Washington shit right there. And the cuffs on the left are the ones I caught my first burglar with back when I was a bobby. The stories were a little different to those you imagined, I think, weren't they? <laughs> yes. To my relief, in some small way, my disappointment. <laughs> Fucking, ah, it's hard to do when your stupid thing doesn't have a sensitivity on the joystick. This grandfather clock is... is fitted with a terrifying blade that keeps dropping down. It's molded on the guillotine, a French execution device. You might have heard of it. And yes, before you ask, it can chop. Heads off, you mean? Have us no. Carrots, pulse slips, and so forth. Oh. <laughs> If you place a large carrot at the bottom there in the morning, by evening it'll be cut clean in two. Well, the play must have, have an almost indescribable edge on it then. Damn. <laughs> Stick your dick in there. <laughs> See what happens. Ah! Oh, this bird looks suspicious. Better bring him to the stand. I never expect to find a parrot in a prison. Must be the governor's pet. Given where we are, it's harder to see the poor creature as a prisoner. Yes. Has the bird learned to mimic the plaintive cries of the inmates of the cells? Oh, no. He's one of three siblings, you see. And he still calls out the names of his two brothers like they had all the time. 
Right. Hi, hi. I hear you, laddie. You want your dinner, eh? Didn't it do it? <laughs> okay, uh. It's a very large cabinet full of papers, isn't it? It's labeled inmate register. Look. And all the files are in alphabetical order. That's 50 years worth of records on Barclay's inmates. Whether or not they left alive after serving their term. All the details about the crimes they committed are recorded in there. Like an epitaph, you might say. A record of crimes and punishments. How dispiriting. And yet, this man seems to be enjoying tea and biscuits as he talks about it. <laughs> so good handcuff. I'll tell you what. Look at this deer. The deer has been staring at me for a while now. It has? The poor thing can't fit through the small hole in the wall. But it can't get its head back out again now either. <laughs> giving me a woefully imploring look. Naruto, are you serious? <laughs> just like, you know what? I'm just not going to say anything. It's not real, Mr. Naruto. It's stuff. What? I mean, yes, of course it is. For a moment, I thought it was another assassin sneaking in via the ven ventilator. I don't like to say... But I think perhaps you need to reread The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> ah... Those tears give me a look. Don't you look at me. I suppose these are all former governors of Barclay Prison, are they? Either that or former inmates who the governor has sent to the gallows. You just feel like displaying for some morbid reason. Oh dear. They all have such severe expressions. I really couldn't deny you their possibility. Especially the one on the extreme right. His expression goes beyond severe into a whole new territory. That one's me. <laughs> oh my god. I'm terribly sorry, sir. Is it a prerequisite of the job, perhaps? Having a severe expression, I mean? Of course it's not. Although, it's taken... It is taken into consideration. A lot. <laughs> uh... Okay, is that it? We got everything. All that crazy gooby shit in here. All right. Chief Warder Vigil. We understand Mr. Vigil is... The chief warder here at the prison. Aye, that he was. Strong sense of responsibility and dedicated to the job. No doubt about it. He was a fine warder. Sorry, did you say was? Yeah. Aye, he doesn't even work here no more. He left the job. Oh my. When was this exactly? There's a question. When was it a boot? Yeah, it cannot have been much less than... Yeah, 10 years ago now. What? What the hell? What? D 10 years ago? He stopped working here 10 years ago? So what's he been doing this whole time? Hey, so I mind it. Do you can? I haven't heard the fella's name in all that time. Has to worry if he's gone missing though. But, but Mrs. Vigil made no mention of it. I think perhaps Mr. Naruto, that his wife simply doesn't know. I think she's unaware that he no longer works here. Well, that's uh, intriguing. Governor Caden, can you tell us what happened? Why did Mr. Vigil give up his job here? A decade ago. That's important, is it? Yes, I believe it may be. What are you thinking, Mr. Naruto? I don't know. I kept wondering, given that it was 10 years ago. Ah. Which was exactly when the professor was being held at this prison. Yeah. Ten years! It's always ten years ago, right? So Mr. Vigil actually resigned from the position of Chief Warder ten years ago, you're telling us? What happened to make him leave the job? In actual fact, he didn't leave the job willingly. He had no choice in the matter. You mean he was dismissed? It was after a particular walk. S sorry? A uh, walk? Aye, it's so worth for it here. A walk to the gallows. I in execution? It's the job of the chief warder to pay the gallows tree and never see any executions, you see. Only, Vigil did something unthinkable on that last walk he was manning. What did he do? I'm sorry, but I can't reveal the information. 
But I can tell you it's very rare for Chief Warder to be relieved of his post. But why wouldn't Mrs. Vigil know about it? She appears to be under the impression that her husband still works here. Now I wouldn't get anything about that, I'm afraid. Can you perhaps answer one more question about the circumstances of his dismissal? And what would that be, in? The last execution that Mr. Virgil was responsible for seeing. Was it by any chance? The professors? My thoughts exactly. I'm sorry. I really am. But I'm no liberty to answer that. I see. That means yes! My father came to Britain all those years ago in order to study forensic medicine. But you seem to have been well acquainted. The dead room. The prison and the cemetery have a lot to do with one another. After all, they need fresh corpses for forensic research. Do you, Ken? Yes, I can imagine. The advancement in medical science isn't always particularly palatable. Your father worked in the laboratory just on the far side of the graveyard. In the basement of St. Sinners. It was still in use today. St. Sinners? That's come up before, I'm sure. St. <laughs> Sinners? That sounds like an oxymoron, eh? Eh? Yes, that's right. We've been there. Nikotobo and I have used to ride in a carriage together and negotiate terms. For more fresh material, I suppose. Aye. And we used to sit there in here for hours and gab on about dis dissection in all sorts. Oh, takes me back. Over a pot of tea and a plate of cuff biscuits, of course. How charming. He was a good fella, your father. Reliable, he did sit on his work. But I'm afraid. I'll never understand you Japanese. Because of Genshin Shizogi, I'm sure, I suppose. Well. Hmm. I can't tell you anything else. Thank you so much for your time, Governor. Oh, one moment for you away then. I'm sure I have it here somewhere. Ah, found it. Here, take this old wee souvenir of your visit to the prison. What is it? That's Vigil's dismissal notice. It's ten years old now, of course. Oh my, are you sure? Aye, it's no trouble at all. It's not the original mind. Hmm, the harsh of man incurred by Mr. Vigil ten years ago that resulted in him losing his job as Chief Warder of Barclay Prison. Thank you very much, Governor Caden. Well, return. Do me a favor and never come back here. The case is closed. Hmm. Well, I think we ought to return to Baker Street for the time being. Yes, I agree. We need to report back to Mr. Holmes with what we found about, out about Mr. Vigil. What will he tell Mrs. Vigil, I wonder? Well, we have to tell her. I'll probably ask doing the, doing the dirty work. Um, notice of dismissal, June 25th. Chief Warder Downey Vigil is relieved of his post with immediate effect for having violated Clause 132 of Her Majesty's Code of Conduct for Prisons. All rights to redundancy pay and other financial benefits are fully revoked. Uh, reason for dismissal, aiding and abetting the escape from this prison of Convict Blank just prior to his execution. Wow. Uh, Convict... Does Genshin fit in there? E G E N S H I No. Asogi doesn't fit in there either. Professor? P R O F E S S O R. I don't think so. I, I would have figured they would use his actual name anyway. I don't know. It might not matter the number of asterisks anyway. It's just probably just there to censor it. Details of his, this escape are still being investigated. Full cooperation with increase will be expected. Prisoner Governor, Prison Governor Barry Caden. It is weird because, like, this shit would then have to be covered up, right? But, like, I can't imagine that this wouldn't, if this was actually them trying to get the professor to escape, right? I mean, this would be here. This would still exist, right? Even if, like, Scythe made this shit up and was like, oh, yeah, he he died and I saw it through, right? I mean, they'd still have to seemingly bury him, like, put him in a coffin and fucking bury him. 
and also this evidence would exist even if it is censored i don't know just be like well wouldn't they someone need to look into that uh, additional notes indications are that the jailbreak plot was conceived prior to the convict's incarceration it's believed the convict engaged in some form of a some form of negotiation with prison staff in order to secure assistance full disclosure of information regarding these negotiations will be demanded intriguing and it makes you wonder then how has he been you know paying for uh his nice lifestyle all these years right uh november 1st home sweet we're back um hello you two hello you two i thought you'd be back for long so i baked some scones for us all ah so that's what the delicious smell is oh my gosh that blew it out greetings my dear fellows it's sky blue holmes here to say hello you've returned a good deal sooner than i was anticipating um hello mr holmes oh god you've turned into a smurf hello mr holmes <laughs> i love the slow reactions of people it's like they've done a few times in this game it's really funny when it's like they see some shit and they just slowly like transition to their next pose and it's like <gasps> like oh my god say nothing your thoughts are written all over your faces in any case turns out it may have been advisable to test my hair color restoration tonic before application Oh, my. Pray tell me, what of our ward of friend? Have you garnered some new information? Oh, um, yes. Something very surprising, in fact. Though it's not a patch on your hair, to be honest. So it certainly isn't. But still, we discovered that... Uh, Holmes! Holmes! Uh-oh. Gina's here and she's big angie. Drop over there, Holmes! This is more pun! Gina? Uh-oh. Did she, oh no, did she lose the prisoners? I, I cut out of it even. Oh no. Oh no, did she mess up? Oh. What's happened? Clearly a very grave matter indeed. For Miss Lestrade made no mention of my hair whatsoever. <laughs> oh. It, it's the boss. What? Oh no. What do you, what do you mean? Inspector Gregson? The, the boss is, is, he's dead. What? They, they just found his body, shot with a pistol. What? But, but, Inspector Crexton? He was murdered? No, not Crexy. Come in, my dear girl. Tell us the whole story. Oh my God, what? Holy shit. Hey, look at this. I'm just kidding. I'm not gonna do that right now. Okay, that's definitely not what I was expecting. Oh my God, what? So the last person on the list, by the way, right? Everybody else says, except, well, actually no, except for Cosmo. Cosmo's still alive. Really? Really? He's fucking dead? Oh my God, I was not expecting to actually die. The inspector's death. Oh, she's so sad. It's just that she really did care about Gregson, though, you know? Even with them butting heads all the time. Are you serious, Gina? Inspector Gregson was... He was really shot? I, I don't know much about what happened by myself yet. They're still there. Investigate the scene. Where did this take place? A little rented room in a building full of flats on Fresno Street. The Ascus of town. No one near his home. He was perhaps investigating a case then. The thing is, no one of the yard knows nothing about no case around there. Oh, how strange. The boss was. It was so good to me. I know I ain't up to much here, but the one day I was gonna show it. I was gonna show my baby girl a proper detective. Oh, Jenny. Aw. So, who did this? Do you have any idea who the culprit is? They got him already. Already? They caught the shooter so soon? Oh, when his reporter something was going on, and the boys got straight down there and took care of him. Who? What awful person did this? I still can't believe in myself. 
Tina? What the fuck? What? It was the Reaper. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> what? Oh boy. Oh shit. It's just getting fucking nut nutty now, dude. Th wait a minute. You don't mean they've arrested Lord Van Zeeks for it? That's right. That Reaper blows gold. He shot the boss. No. Lord Van Zeeks? Oh, fuck me. What the hell? Are you quite sure, Mr. Strahd? It's Brock Van Zeeks the police have arrested. I saw it with me own eyes. The beautiful room at the yacht. I don't believe it. But they're with witnesses. They're all saying it was him. So you mean there were actually multiple witnesses? They are the good shot, apparently. But when I long got to the scene, it was only the boss and the Reaper bloke in the room. Wow. Okay, so this is like really kind of going off. Like, this doesn't. Well, I mean, I am sure it will eventually loop back around to it, but it's seemingly unrelated to the case that we are currently involved in, right? That we're focusing on with the missing person. So it's just like, whoa, what the what? I was just thinking we we're going to find this other guy dead, and then that was going to lead to the case. There's no way Lord Van Seeks would have taken Gregson's life. I. I just don't believe it. I don't believe it either. Thank you for informing us, Mrs. Strahd. This really is most terrible news. I'm dreadfully sorry. What are you saying sorry for? You didn't do nothing. Well, anyway, I'm taking a cab over to the sea right now. Please come at all as soon as you can. You go to hell. Oh, I'm seeing her cry because it's like fucking rips my heart, dude. It's Texas law to appear wherever since the plot has unfolded. There's a wonder we all look haggard. Sometimes, this seems almost too much for the nerves. Mr. Holmes. What use is there in being a great detective if I fail to see something like this coming? Hmm? How can I let this happen to Gregson? To Gregson? Mr. Arhodo, I shall leave at once to begin my investigation. Yeah, of course. Yes, we will too. It would be helpful if you could talk to Mr. Reaper and see what you can glean. I'm sure you were intending to do so anyway. Until later then. Going after my blue hair, that's how serious I am. Inspector Gregson, dead. Lord Van Zeke's arrested. Bruno, Susie, I've called you a handsome. It's waiting outside. Wow, you're on this shit, Iris. Thanks, Iris. Shall we, Miss Susto? Yes. Damn, this shit just got dark real fast. Fuck me. Fuck investigating any horse shit. Let's go. We got a guy in the world to save. What the hell? Daddy Zeke's, what have you been doing while we were gone? Hello there. I'm over here reading some poetry. Damn, feels good to murder somebody. It's been a while. <laughs> oh, hey, I didn't see you walk in here. No very fair, so I'll go prison. So one. There he is. Lord Van Zeke's behind bars. So it's true. He really was arrested. I'm curious what he's going to say. That is pretty insane. That there'd be multiple witnesses to this, too. Not just one. No, we got multiple people saying he did this. He's sitting with his back to the wall, reading something. I don't think he's noticed us. Um, Lord Van Zeeks. Oh, God. You really? You're going to be my defense lawyer? Great. I'm fucked. <laughs> what? I thought you said I was good enough. Not for me. Fancy meeting you here. The last place on earth I'd like to be. With the last person on earth I'd like to see. Ah, oh, come on! Did we bond? I thought we bonded! I couldn't very well not come. We'd heard what happened. That you... That Inspector Gregson was... Go home. This has nothing to do with you. But... Forgive me, Lord Van Seeks, but I must disagree. Inspector Gregson was very helpful to us on a number of occasions. We're indebted to him, at the very least. We owe it to him to find out the truth about his death. He must help us with our investigation. Please. 
There's really nothing I can tell you. What were you just reading at the back of the cell there? Does this thing relate to the case? This. The Yard isn't quite so cavalier with his information as to share case details with a suspect. This is a letter from an old acquaintance. Oh, who might that be? Someone you know, as it happens. Albert Hairbrain. Oh. Saying that he's like, he's fine and that he got out of the country. I, you know, something that it also occurred to me, actually, um, as I've been thinking it as well, of to uh, Genshin Sh Asogi, like, killing these people, right? Apparently, the last person he killed, right, was his brother, Clint. It makes you wonder, then, was Clint doing some shady, illicit shit, right? Something that would have warranted his death if Genshin was seemingly going around dishing out vigilante justice, right, to, to ne'er-do-wells. Hmm, doesn't kind of make you wonder. Of course, yes. I keep forgetting they went to the same university. And I would like to read my correspondence in peace, so let's get this over with, shall we? What is it you want to know? Strange. I mean, let's face it, Orphanzix never misses his words. But they seem to have less bite than usual somehow. Well, yes, I am behind bars. You know how much thing to do with it? Hey, check this out. I think you know this is worn by people in my country to show their defense lawyers, don't you? Is this going to be the same? Uh, and I think you know that I believed you to be merely playing a loyal craft. Initially. Oh no, it's different. But it would seem your armband may actually imply some dormant talent after all. More fan seeks. Do you mean... No, shut up. Let's hope you wake up soon. Yes, I was clearly daydreaming. Almost thought I got a compliment there. <laughs> Cute. Hey, check this out. It's not for me. Ah, that's that's not why I was showing you it. I suppose if it was a black-headed league, you would have no hesitation. None whatsoever! Sadly, my own hair could no more be described as black as it could red. What color league should I then join? <laughs> People are troubled by the most unexpected problems sometimes. <laughs> I'm not great. You're great. Shut up. Uh, what happened, bro? Can you at least tell us your side of the story, Lord Fanseeks? What happened? Oh, boy. How much do you already know? We know that the inspector was shot dead in a small rented room on Fresno Street. And that you were found there by the police when they arrived on the scene and immediately arrested. We were told that there was nobody else in the room and some witnesses heard the gunshot. Then you're well informed. And there's really nothing I can add. The truth is, I don't know what happened myself. But the gunshot? Obviously you didn't fire the gun, did you? I'm not in the habit of shooting the people I work alongside. I also heard the noise, however. Before I had a chance to investigate, I was apprehended by the arriving officers. So he doesn't actually know what happened. If I might ask, what were you doing in that place to begin with? I don't need to answer that. But what? Come on! Yeah, you do! Oh. After all, you're not representing me. He is going to need a lawyer, though. I mean, come on, right? Or am I? No, you're not. Who's going to be representing you in court, Lord Van Seeks? Myself. Anyone other than you, I should imagine. <sighs> Would I be right in assuming that you have no representation as yet? Defense lawyers shy away from any trial involving the Reaper, as I'm sure you know. But this is different. In my career, of all the defendants I prosecuted, only 19 have ever been acquitted. Of them, 16 subsequently died in mysterious circumstances. Questions will be asked now. Surely not. I assure you, no defense lawyer will want to touch me with the end of a barge pole. But you didn't actually have anything to do with those people's deaths, did you? It's been 10 years now that I've been known as the Reaper of the Bailey. Believe me, nobody wants to know the true identity of this killer more than I. However... 
it seems things may come to a head before I have a chance to uncover the truth about that. What does he mean by that? Was he set up then for this shit? Basically? It makes me wonder if he was like called out there, right? And set up to be the, the fall. But why would that be the case? Would this be like basically like the higher ups, his superiors, like throwing him under the bus, maybe? Like I'm trying to think as like a grander scope, a giant conspiracy. Maybe for his digging into like the professor case again. Now they're like worried that like they can't trust him. And maybe, I don't know. I don't know. It's just me spitballing. Uh, Professor Harebrain's letter. After the trial, Professor Harebrain was supposed to go straight back to Germany, I thought. It's alleged to inform me of his safe arrival at home. I arranged his passage by sea and rail. It's a relief, I must say. He should now be beyond the reaches of the Reaper. Because the Reaper doesn't follow people abroad, you mean? Yes, so it seems. Your stooped little Nipponese friend, for example. You told me he was keeping well in Japan when I inquired the other day. Yes, that's right. He's an author now, happily working in Tokyo. So Professor Herobrine is safely back in Germany now. He is. So, it appears our conversation has run dry. There was a two second silence, that's all. Come on! Well, in any event, if you'll excuse me now, I wouldn't like to detain you. I was wondering, Lord Van Zeeks, if you'd like... I'd be happy to advocate for you. You trust me, do you? Yes. I've heard you speak many times in court. I've seen how you treat people. So I'm quite sure that you would never have taken another's life. It's just... My feelings can't be used as evidence in a court of law, sadly. It's a very gracious offer, however. I trust no one. What? Not the police, not the judiciary, and not you, Nipponese. But please! I have no intention of engaging your services. Ah, oh, come on, don't be that way, man. Chasm between us is just too wide and too deep, it seems. Aw. I'd appreciate it if you don't visit again. Then neither of us will waste any more time. Back to my reading. Perhaps you need to dig a little deeper and find out more about Lord Van Zeeks and what happened to Inspector Gregson. Damn, this is just getting fucking good, dude. Oh my god. This is crazy. Oh my the crazy pants. Alright, let's go see Gregson's dead out of his body. Is he really dead? Are we sure? I don't know. He might he might still be alive. Uh November 1st, we're on Fresno Street. I see a picture of a person. Holy shit, there's some blood. This really isn't out of the way part of London. I doubt many people will find their way down this back street. So this dust ridden ridden rented old room is where it happened then. I mean, this is going to definitely get, this is going to get the whole yard, like, if a cop is murdered, yeah, that's going to, like, you can bet your sweet ass, the yard, the police, whoever it is, are going to be on that shit, right? That's a big fucking deal, all right? Generally, they look out for their own. I would imagine these guys are no different. So this is where poor Inspector Gregson lost his life. Yes, the police are already hard at work investigating, it seems. Is that a wig over there? I don't see Mr. Holmes anywhere, though. Perhaps his investigations have taken him elsewhere. Oi! What do you think you're doing there? Every one of them drawers is gonna be taken right out so you can look underneath it all. I want the space above this ceiling check. And don't forget to look inside the chimney stack too. Blimey! Ain't you lot never going on in a house looking for two when the owners are out of town? Gene's obviously got some unique investigative techniques she wants everyone to adopt. <laughs> oh, so you turn up at last. Mind you, I ain't been here long myself. Hello again, Gina. Holmes has only just left. You're lucky you missed that. He went pressing around here, didn't you? Born the stuff and flicking that out of his, just, then just scoppered. Oh, he's finished investigating already, you mean? Yeah. He didn't stop to say nothing to no one. Not even me. Gina, would you mind if he investigated too? Listen, Otto. You're a lawyer, right? 
Um, yes. Why? Well, you're not thinking of trying to help that Reaper bloke, are you? Oh. Poor Gina. She's never going to forget, is she? That trial will be haunt her forever. Well, not to, not to mention she the death of now her mentor. So yeah, no, she's really now probably has a red hot hatred for fucking Van Ziggs. Gina, if you don't mind me saying, if Core Van Ziggs really is responsible for this crime, he will be duly and fairly judged in court. I will fucking Susano toss his ass straight to hell. I suppose you're right, yeah. Go on then, Ordo. Get investigating. I want to know the truth about what really happened to you. Thank you, Gina. But, uh, first off, Gina, what was Inspector Gregson doing here in the first place? That's what I want to know. It's what? Half a year since I go out of the clink. That's where I decided to give him up, me diving, and become a detective instead. Oh, yes. Mr. Holmes twisted the inspector's arm to agree to take you on in his apprentice, didn't he? Something like that, I think. Anyway, point is, I didn't really know much about the boss till then. But it turns out, he's a bit of a legend at the yard. Goodness, really? I say he's managed to solve some really tricky case. Just like that. He did? Yep. And ever since then, he started going out on all sorts of investigations. But always on his own. And also, the yard even knows what all, half the cases he's working on are, apparently. Oh, uh, really? That's not how it's supposed to work, is it? So what was the legendary inspector doing in a dingy little room like this? Oh, the, the, I just realized he a, a red wig, right? So was he trying to blend in with the, the red-haired crowd? I know he had a lot of respect for the Reaper and all. And look where that landed him. Respect for the Reaper? In what way? I don't say as much. I take my head off to that fella. Well, his words. Not how the general public feels, is it? Most people are terrified of the Reaper. Yeah. The wolf said that's exactly why I respected the bloke. I didn't realize Gregson held the Reaper in quite such high regard. He said something else to me and all. That I didn't need to worry about the Reaper. Because he only goes after people what are bad. It did kind of set my mind at ease when he said that. Right. What is this place then? Does anyone live here? Apparently it's being rented by some cove called Hugh Boone. Hugh Boone? Hugh Boone? Huge Boone! Huge Bone! Hugh Boone. It's sort of here today, gone tomorrow name. That, isn't it? Yeah, he's what you call an unidentified person. We haven't been able to get in touch with him. I see. Well, judging from appearances, I'd have to say this place hasn't been li lifted for a long time. If ever. Right? All the last from the yard piled down to get stuck into the investigation. But there's so little here. No one knew what to do with themselves. I do wonder. Yes, Mrs. Toe? Well, could it be that this Hugh Boone is in fact Inspector Gregson himself? What? How could that be? Well, if he was investigating on his own, it's quite possible that this was, in fact, some kind of secret office of his. I... I'd never even consider that. Nice work, Suze. We're actually following a line of inquiry like that ourselves. You are? If you look around the room, you'll see there's a few things that uh, hint at it. We should really investigate this place in detail. I see. I see that's where the poor inspector was found. Over there. Yeah, that's right. I said it was a single bullet what did him in. Apparently the bullet went right through, through him, and struck a candle tree on the wall. Oh yes, it's blown one of the candles apart completely. Where'd the bullet land then? It hit the wall or it stuck, it stuck in like the last candle or something? And the gun used to say on the floor. It's the Reapers, isn't it? No denying that. What, really? How do you know that? Take it easy! I don't know what to do with myself when you stab me with them big white eyes. I'm only saying what I heard. I don't know much about guns myself. But there's some big wig lawman or whatever who said so. Why don't you go ask him? A big wig lawman, is it? Anyway, Fresno Street runs along under that window there. 
They got some street sellers just outside who heard the gunshot. Oh, but I don't recall seeing anybody else outside. Yeah, they've all been taken down to the yard for question. That's why. We're talking about the yard's legendary inspector here, after all. They'll be getting a grilling. Do you think we might be able to speak with those street sellers ourselves? I doubt it. The last of y'all just won't know what you're snooping for, and you'll be up for a grilling and all. So we can't interview the witnesses, then. Shame. Well, that sucks. All right, well, let's have a little look-see doodle. So we got a picture here. That kind of stands out immediately. Oh, it's a photograph stand. I suppose it must be a picture of one of Inspector Gregson's family members. Ah! What's the matter? Your eyes look like they're about to pop out of your head. They are. Look, it's Narahodo. Quickly. <gasps> what the fuck? Huh? I feel like this woman is familiar somehow. Mr. Narahodo! I'm sorry. I just can't, for whatever reason, remember this person until somebody says something. Of course she's familiar. We met her only this morning. Ha! Ah! It's, it's, it's Mrs. Vigil. This makes no sense. Why would there be a picture of Mrs. Vigil in here? That's a good fucking question. See, that's what I mean. Like, eventually, that, like, it was going to come back around to where that was connected to this case, because that's how it always goes. It can't not be connected. We can't just be faffing about doing fuck all. To be frank, I don't think I've ever been more stumped. I'm, so, I'm sorry to say, I have no idea either. Photograph of the smiling Mrs. Vigil in her younger years. It was found at desk at the scene of the crime. I'm guessing she must be acquainted with uh, Gregson. Uh, okay, cannot rotate. This is like some sort of notice board or something. It's absolutely covered in scraps of paper. Uh, Mr. Arhoda, look. This, this you mean? It's an autopsy report, isn't it? And these are cases, case notes here. And details of prison inmates. Yes. In fact, they're all sort of documents that only a detective could normally acquire. What on earth went on in this room? Some old newspaper cuttings. Ah, and this one here. Oh, yes. The advertisement, you mean? To the Red-Headed League. But why? What's that doing here? Whoever occupied this room was clearly interested in, in it for some reason. An empty fireplace makes a room feel even colder than it would be otherwise, doesn't it? It's thick with dust. Look, I think it would be fair to say it hasn't been used in a very long time. In other words, whoever lived in this room must have been extremely hardy in cold weather. Or nobody lived here at all. I merely visited when the occasion arose. I wouldn't like to say which is more likely. N no, that's right. It's one or the other. Hey, what's up, man? Um, excuse me. Oh, Inspector! Yo, uh, sir. Poor man. Can't possibly be able to focus on investigating when he's so upset. Oh, no. Oh, oh. Sorry, I thought, I thought he was talking to me. He's like, oh, he's going, oh, Inspector. He was, yeah. Gotcha. I was like, what, is he missing me for an Inspector or something? What the heck is that? I can just focus on it. Oh, what's this? It would appear to be a little model... Policeman. It's rather charming, isn't it? In a way. Seeing it's on the, the floor here, do you think it belongs to Inspector Gregson? It's a little hard to imagine Lord Van Zeke's playing with something like this. <laughs> Yay! He's like a little miniature version of himself in Naruto. He's like, stupid Nipponese. I don't like you at all. Ah, uh, but we'd be best friends. No, shut up. You're stupid. Blah, blah, blah. Why are you so mean to me, Lord Van Zeke? No reason. It's not like I'm infatuated with you or anything. Really? Because I am. What? Yes. I love you, Lord Van Zeke. You're right, and I love you. Mm. Uh, Lord Van Zeke. Oh, where, where did you come from? You, you dirty demons! You, I tell you, I just uh, get, get out of here! Ah, oh, oh, that's why. Uh, I see me so much. I understand. <laughs> it's only about eight centimeters tall. It could have fallen out of someone's pocket, I suppose. We should record this evidence just in case. Yes, I agree. It is rather delightful, after all, in a way. It's covered in giblets. A small, rather endearing model of a blurish policeman found at the scene of the crime on uh, Fresno Street. Let's have a more detailed look at it. The helmet of this charming policeman appears to be a little worse for wear. I'm not convinced about the charming part, but yes, you're right. The head part looks like it's been fairly heavily manhandled. Almost as if somebody has enjoyed twisting it around and around for fun. 
Should we try twisting it around around too? For fun. Oh. Oh, God. Ah, what's that? It appears to be some sort of key. Is it? I can't tell because my fucking portrait's in the way. But it's tiny, though. It could be a key for a door. Not that size. So what's it for, I wonder? Uh, a key shaft uh, to pop out from the base when it's twisted. That's interesting. Make key for the... Well, no, I guess, I guess it wouldn't be for the room. Uh, maybe a music box or something? <gasps> a music box? <gasps> like the music box that was in the file case of the last game, maybe. I don't know. I think we already kind of figured that one out, but, you know, maybe. <laughs> this looks like some sort of key. Yes, it does. A very tiny and simple key. What's a little key doing inside a figurine of a policeman in the first place? What's it for? Hmm. All right, well, there's the wig. Red wig. If I can fuck it. God damn it. Uh, uh, okay, that better be close enough. Since we came in here, I can't take my eyes off this thing. Oh, funnily enough, neither can I. It's a hairpiece, isn't it? It is. It is! A bright red hairpiece. I suppose the fact that it's right there next to where the body was found means we have to accept that Inspector Gregson wore wigs, does it? And it's such a flame-colored red, too. Yes. That's a color we've come across very recently elsewhere, isn't it? Exactly. This is a vital clue. I'm sure of it. A flame red wig, wig found at the scene of the crime of Preston Street presumably belonged to Inspector Gregson. Let's have a more detailed look at it, though. It's always, I've always wondered what the underside of a hairpiece looks like. That doesn't surprise me at all, Mr. Arahoto. You always want to see what lies beneath, don't you? I'm not sure that's quite how I put it. You must have to use lots of bird line to keep it in place on your head. So it doesn't get blown off in a gust of wind, I mean. That might be a little inconvenient when you wanted to take it off again, don't you think? No. Uh, I guess that's it. I was thinking there might be like a tag or something underneath, but. So I suppose this is where the victim. That's right. The rope was laid around the body to show exactly how it was found. Poor Inspector Rex himself has already been taken away. I would probably be under Dr. Sai's scalpel by now, if, I'm not, if not for what happened last week. Ugh. And from the shape of the rope, it would appear that the inspector was curled up in a ball. Yeah. Are you feeling all right, Mr. Narahoto? You look like you've just seen a ghost. I know it's just a rope, but, well, it conjures up quite a terrifying image. That's all. Especially with the blood scenes next to it. Oh, I do understand. In some ways, what we picture in our minds can be even worse than reality. Sister is not so strong, though. She's taking this far better than I am. Hey, look, a gun! It's presumably the murder weapon, then. Oh, oh my. It is real, I suppose. I, I think so. Guns are so rare in Japan. I really know very little about them. So that one time I had, held one in my hand and shot someone in the face. Boom! There's one way to know for sure, Mr. Arauto. Fire a shot! No, no, no! If I did that, I'd be looking for a skilled lawyer to preserve that me in court. Slightly safer just to ask someone who might know, I think. The murder weapon that was found in the scene of the crime of Fresno Street. Probably best to avoid handling it. So I can't... I can't look at it? Nah, I can look at it. Fuck you. Suppose this must have been the murder weapon. Oh, oh my. It's real, I suppose. It's the... Uh, okay, this is all the same shit. Maybe you? Um, excuse me. Are you just gonna say the same shit? No, oh, sorry, sir. I can't see things, sir. Too many tears, sir. Right. Perhaps I better leave you to your work then. <laughs> so I can see things like that. These guys have character after all. <laughs> look down at us with a great beyond space. No way. We look after things in the yard. I dropped some deep thoughts there. Do we have at least a picture of, like, what happened to him? Someone's very haphazardly nailed those boards over the broken glass, haven't they? You couldn't even really call it a window anymore. Well, if you remember the window in Mr. Natsumi's room, it was totally blocked up with bricks. So one at least let in some light. So you could say... You could say nothing more about it. I'm starting to feel even more sorry for Mr. Natsumi now. The top of one of the candles in this candle holder has been completely blown off. Yes, there's a wax spattered on the wall behind. Look. I suppose if a bullet had hit it, 
does seem likely that the bullet hit the, the candle. Having first passed through the inspector's body. Ugh. Now that wax on the wall looks like blood to me. A candelabrum from the wall of the room of the Fresno Sewer where the inspector was found dead. Then top of the candle appears to have been blown off. Yeah, I kind of would think the blood, there'd be actually be blood spatter there too. Ah, there's some black marks here. Look. Yes, they looks like some sort of scorch marks. Perhaps the bullets struck the candle here, do you think? It's only this one candle that's been cracked in half, it seems. Yes, I think you might be right. Firearms are rarely used by criminals in Japan, so I'm afraid I'm not particularly knowledgeable about them. Hmm. Uh, okay, so I guess will we talk to uh, Gina about the gun? Gina, what do you make of this? What is that evidence? What's that out of it? Yeah, especially so she wouldn't really know about guns. I was thinking, well, I don't know. She ha had a uh, one that shot fucking smoke bombs out. Are we done here? The Lord Chief Justice place. Hmm. I don't know. Uh, let's go to the let's go to Stronghearts place then. Is Holmes here? November 1st, uh, first Supreme Court, Lord Chief Justice's office. You've made quite good time. Uh, I took an express train back to London. Who's talking? I hear Lord Strongheart. Can you? Yes, it sounds as though he's talking to someone. <gasps> Behold, it's Kazuma! Is everything in place? I have a private compartment on the train, so I can check all the paperwork. It's Kazuma-sama. Ah, your timing is impeccable. I it is? No doubt you have heard the sickening news about the Reaper's latest devilry. Yes. I'm sure you don't believe it, of course, though. Or, I'm sure you don't believe it, of course, though, Lord Strongheart. That Lord Van Zeeks could have done such a thing to Inspector Gregson. I believe only in the facts. And the facts in this case point to one thing. The unavoidable accusal of Lord Van Six for this crime. We must bring charges against the Reaper for taking the life of our legendary detective. Oh, no, surely not. It's a truly regrettable situation. Tomorrow the Forensic Science Symposium finally begins. At the very least, though, we can show the world our justice system's swift and equitable processes. So does that mean the trial is tomorrow? Precisely. In fact, this is a fine opportunity for introductions. Ah, uh, so is he? Is Sogi going to be the, the prosecutor? Damn, that's cool, man. Kazuma. Ah, of course. You're already acquainted, aren't you? Mr. Sogi here will be present at tomorrow's proceedings. Leading the prosecution. Wait, what? K Kazuma? As I'm sure you're aware, he's a very capable practitioner of law. Kazuma-sama? A prosecutor? Oh my god. Cosma, hey, look. I'm sorry for all the worry I've caused you, but you'll be all right now. Has your memory completely returned? Yes, completely. I remember everything. And my theme is kicking in, including what I was coming here to do. Right. Kazuma-sama, I can't tell you how happy I am to see you alive and well like this. How did you come to be here in London when you were suffering from amnesia? It was the voice. This past year, I've been hearing it in my head constantly, saying the same thing over and over. Go to London. That's where your destiny awaits. It was that voice that guided me here to London. I'm so sorry for what's happened. Anyway. My memory might have returned to me, but there's something that won't return to the way it was before. Huh? What do you mean? I'm a prosecutor now, so I'm sure our paths will cross again very soon. 
My God, ah, uh, a new generation of prosecutor. Now someone who's around my age, we shall clash and then make love at the end. Just like Edgeworth and fucking Phoenix. I'm sure you can imagine that tomorrow's trial will be closely followed all over London. In fact, no, people all over the empire will be watching closely to see how it unfolds. There's no salvation for anyone in a trial prosecuted by the Reaper of the Bailey. And now, the Reaper himself must stand the dock. Quite so. The public want answers about the Reaper. Answers about how and why those who escaped conviction subsequently died mysterious deaths. But Lord Van Seeks firmly denies any involvement in such matters. And there have been thorough investigations that have proven him to be innocent. That's certainly true. Or it has been, at least, until now. Ah! No, tomorrow's trial will mark the start of a new chapter in our country's great judicial history. Interesting. Very interesting. You don't seem too bent out of shape about this shit, sir, if I may say. So, Cosmo will be prosecuting tomorrow? That's right. But he's a defense lawyer, Strongheart. Lord Strongheart. Accomplished young law practitioners cannot pick and choose their roles. And imagine what it will mean for the prosecution to know the strategies commonly employed by the defense. A devastating combination, wouldn't you agree? Absolutely. I have no doubt at all that Cosmo will be razor sharp as a prosecutor. But why Cosmo-sama? There are surely many other highly skilled prosecutors in Great Britain. Also, was he like... His pal? He was his, like, protege for all this time. Is he gonna be cool with, you know, going against Daddy Zeke's? It was a personal request. I asked to be assigned to the trial. You, you asked for this? But why? It'll all become clear tomorrow. I'm guessing you intend to stand for the defense, don't you? Although, the Reaper appears to be turning down all offers of representation. I'm surprised such a personal request would have been upheld. It seems unprecedented. Quite exceptional, in fact. You are quite right, Miss Mikitoba. Tomorrow's trial will be unprecedented and exceptional in every way. Ah, after all, the accused is one of Britain's greatest prosecutors, the pride of the Empire. It would be unwise to give the public a reason to perceive it as the judiciary closing ranks. So that's why you're happy to let a foreigner handle the prosecution? Ryanosuke, let's see how your skills have been honed. After practicing law in this land for so many months. Man, can I have my sword back? You're just gonna hold two anyway. You don't need two. You greedy goober. Kazuma, I don't understand why you're being so hostile to me now. This isn't going to end well, my friend. When I cut you down to size. Oh yes, we noticed that there was a gun at the scene of the Inspector Gregson's death. Do you know what if it belongs to Lord Van Seeks? That would be a question for the lead detective investigating the scene. That's a new animation. I don't think we've seen. Well, the thing is, she wasn't sure, so she told me I should ask somebody higher up who might know. That's right, Mr. Arahodo. Be direct. It's certainly a model that's issued to all personnel involved in law enforcement, yes. Which includes prosecutors, as I'm sure you can imagine. In that case... Damn, you guys get guns? It actually have belonged to the victim. No, Gregson had his gun on his person. What about Lord Van Zeeks? He claims it's currently not in his possession. What? According to his story, he lost it. In short, it's more than a little suspicious. But just because the gun in question is the same type as the defendant's, there's no proof that it's actually his. No, of course not. Nevertheless, the situation is great for Lord Van Zeeks. It doesn't look like we're going to gain much more here. Well, thank you very much, Lord Strongheart. Remember, tomorrow's trial will go down in our Empire's history. There's much you could learn from the public gallery. Damn, thanks, dickhead. Sorry I've taken up so much of your time. 
We'll see ourselves out. Hold it! Hold it! Before you go, Rienosuke. Oh, what is it, Kazuma? I just wanted to thank you. Kazuma-sama? What? You took my determination to heart and brought it with you over the ocean in my stead. And you carried out my role to perfection. You always were intent on setting British law in order to change our own justice system. It was your dream, and Mr. Arhoto didn't want that to die with you. Yes, but I had another purpose for coming here. Oh? I actually have a favor to ask. Which is? This trial I'll be prosecuting tomorrow. I'd like you to be there to see how it ends. Right in front of me, as the defense counsel. Why? What's this all about? I know you have what it takes. But Lord Van Six would never put his fate in my hands. On the contrary, he recognizes your talent. He does? It's not easy to see behind the facade sometimes. Here, have a look at this. <gasps> it's his brother Clint and Greg Z. That's... That's Lord Van Zeeks and Inspector Gregson. In a photograph that must have been taken some time ago by the look of it. And who's the third person? Clint Eastwood. It was displayed very prominently in the detective's office. In Gregson's office, you mean? Yes. What I'm trying to say is, if you really think you can trust the Reaper, you might find that some straight talking makes him take a different view. Take it. Mmm. Displayed in Inspector Grex's office as if it was a treasured memory. I don't understand. Why are you giving me this? Just hurry, Rienosuke. Visiting hours of the prison are almost over. What are you doing, Kazuma? Hello, I'm here too, by the way. Uh, I've been doing this for a while. Uh, I don't know how much longer we got. The thing is, I, I, I feel like we still got to run to homes, right? Before moving on. Ah, fuck it. We'll just go. Since it's going a little long, I can always cut it. November 1st, local prison, cell one. Lord Van Zeeks is still reading that letter. Damn, dude. I'm a slow reader. Come on, cut me some slack. We've been going quite some time now. Either he's an incredibly slow reader or it's an incredibly long letter. I might even be able to read English faster than he can. I heard that. I was intending to ignore you entirely. <laughs> but I can't turn a deaf ear to such insulting Nipponese. Oh, um, sorry. I think you'd hear that. I had the case notes brought to me in secret. I was reading them to pass the time. Yes, we heard that your trial is set for tomorrow. Which is none of your business. So, have you found a lawyer? How many times must I reiterate the same thing? This has nothing to do with you. In other words, no. We were just talking to Lord Strongheart, and the prosecutor for your trial has been decided. I'd expect nothing less, though I have no idea who it is. It's going to be Cosmo Asogi. Asogi? That made the color drain from his face. <laughs> well then. It seems I'm going to have to engage in conversation with you again, after all. Alright, let's just right off the bat. Look, dude. Look at this shit. Look at this fucking picture. Boom. Lord Van Zeeks, we came by this old, pho old photograph. Where did you get that? It was taken when I became a qualified prosecutor. It's almost unbelievable. I, I assumed it was long lost. Um, is the man on the left there? Yes, that's my brother, Clint. Yeah. It had to be, really. Apparently, this picture was prominently displayed in Gregson's office. He had a deep respect for you, you know. Were you aware of that? Respect? That's... Nonsense! No, we've heard someone attest to it very clearly. 
Inspector Jean Lestrade, no less. Well, maybe once, yes. There was a time things were like that. We were brothers in arms, jovially discussing the future of justice in other such lofty subject matter. That was a nice glimpse of the past. I thank you. It feels though I got a nice glimpse of the past then too. There was a glimmer of light in his eyes, a brief twinkle, an insight into the true nature of this man known to all as the Stone Cold Reaper of the Bailey. Ten years ago, my older brother, who was the director of prosecutions at the time, was murdered. And the killer, as you know, was a visiting student from the Far East. Not a single day goes by when I don't curse the name of Sogi. Kenshin Sogi was Cosmos Sama's father. So what cruel twist of fate is this now, ten years later? The man's own son is to crucify me in some kangaroo court. I still don't understand why Lord Strongheart apprenticed because Cosma to you. It's what he does. No doubt he knew of the young man's true identity from the outset. But what could he have been hoping to achieve? Unless I forget that it was only eight days ago that Cosmo recovered from his amnesia. Why would Lord Strongheart assign this trial to somebody like that? Hmm. Asogi. That name is the very epitome of my bane. The bane that is you, Nipponese. Right, your hatred of all us Japanese. The Nipponese bane. I'd only just been appointed as a prosecutor when it happened 10 years ago. My brother Clint, the director of prosecutions was hunting down a mass murderer. The so-called professor, assigned to the investigation as his partner, was a certain visiting student dispatched from Scotland Yard. And that was Genshin Asogi. Exactly. Wow, really? So little do you know that he was working alongside the killer the whole time. I developed a deep respect for the man. He seemed noble-minded and chivalrous in the extreme to me. But none of us saw the true nature of the man. So I lost everything when it happened. My esteemed brother, the people I believed in. In any semblance of right prevailing or wrong. Oh, how awful. To avenge my brother, I prosecuted in Asogi's trial. It wouldn't ordinarily have been allowed, but I beleaguered the ascribed prosecutor until he consented. What do you mean by the ascribed prosecutor? The man in charge of the Professor Case inquiry, Lord Mail Strongheart. Really? Wait, what? Lord Strongheart? He was a highly accomplished prosecutor, but he agreed to relinquish the trial to me and act as my advisor instead. Interesting. Since that time, he's the one person to whom I felt indebted. I'm sure he must have seen your zeal for the case and recognized your potential as a prosecutor. Anyway, time passed. Within earlier this year, who should arrive in London but you? Ah! And, of all things, as a lawyer. I felt your animosity the first time I ever faced you in the courtroom. Your obvious deep loathing of us Japanese. I kept telling myself it was logical. But for so many years, that hatred had festered inside me. I could no longer control it. I can understand why. Now I know the history. But in the same way that I've long felt the Nipponese to be the bane of my life. To Cosmo Sogi, I am the bane of his. The Reaper who sent his father to the gallows. He is looking for revenge, and he tends to take it in court tomorrow. No, I don't think so. I think he's just like us. He wants to seek the truth as well. I don't think he really thinks that Van Zeeks did this. And similarly, just how I don't think Van Zeeks is holding that personally against the Sogi either, right? That's why I feel like he didn't have a, a huge reaction to it, to his identity, right? Is that he's not holding that against him. The sins of the father are not the sins of the son, and I think Van Zeeks is smart enough to know that. 
Gregson's transfer to the Paris police prefecture had finally been arranged for the coming month. But he'll never make it to France now. It's a tragedy. Oh yes, come to think of it, he did mention something about that, didn't he? I wonder, does it happen often? Being transferred internationally, I mean. It's the first time I've ever encountered it. Oh. The Paris police welcoming an English detective is almost inconceivable. I can't imagine what kind of magic Gregson must have worked to put that arrangement in place. It sounds like that mystery is even the Reaper perplexed. I'm afraid to say that we were very ignorant about Inspector Gregson's standing. We hear that he was considered something of a legend at Scotland Yard. Again, it was ten years ago that he first made a name for himself by uncovering a decisive piece of evidence and exposed the professor's identity. If it wasn't for Gregson's singular approach to the case, the discovery would never have been made, I say. What sort of approach? After my brother's life was taken, the inspector pushed for a full autopsy. Oh my, ten years ago? Why is that so surprising? Autopsy was considered a desec desecration of the body at the time, and rarely performed. And my brother was of course a noble. That made the idea of it even more unthinkable. But something Gregson had dug up in his investigation made him determined it was necessary. His powerful conviction somehow influenced the House of Lords, and as a result, I could avenge my brother's death. So, you must have had a great confidence in the inspector's abilities then. And it's even more inconceivable that you would have taken his life. Inspector Gregson. Aw. About the gun used to shoot the inspector that was found at the scene. Yeah, it just kind of made me wonder then, what, what is the prosecution going to say Van Zick's motive was to doing this? Ah, yes. That's not mine. Really? Because common opinion seems to be that it is. What do you expect me to say to that? <laughs> I answered your question. It's not mine! Lord Strongheart informs us that you claim to have misplaced your firearm. As embarrassing as that is, I'm afraid it's true. When did you lose it then? That, I don't know. Oh! I was issued with a revolver when I first became a prosecutor ten years ago. I must have stowed it somewhere, I suppose. Or left it somewhere, perhaps. You have something in common with Lord Van Zeeks after all, Mr. Naruto. <laughs> a talent for misplacing things. No, no, no! This has nothing to do with me! Don't drag me into it! Don't make the mistake of associating me with this... Nipponese! We're not like at all! I don't love him! Oh dear. The rift is very wide, isn't it? So it's not decisive evidence, clearly. But it doesn't look good, that's for sure. ruh -ro. Okay, are we... Come on, man. Just let us do it, all right? Let us do it! Mr. Narahudo. No! It's the first time he's ever used my actual name! I've lost all confidence in my country's justice system. I don't trust the police, the judiciary, or lawyers. But there's still one thing I'm willing to believe in. What's that? That's what you see in the eyes of another across the courtroom. A simple determination to know the truth. The Lord Van Zeeks. From the very first time we clashed in the Bailey almost a year ago now. I couldn't deny it, even though I dearly wished I could. Here is a loathsome Nipponese, who has absolute integrity as a lawyer. There are only two other men I've known with that same look in their eyes. My brother, Clint, and Genshin Sogi. The man he idolized and the man who betrayed his trust in the most hideous way. Wow. When you showed me that photograph just now, it reminded me. You mean this photograph? Back then, I was able to laugh. I was free of the shackles of mistrust that plague me now. I look to the future with hope. Since then, I protected myself against betrayal by refusing to trust anyone. But at times, the mire into which I've sunk makes it almost impossible to breathe. I'm so sorry. So, Mr. Narodo. 
I want to believe in that look in your eyes. I need to believe in it. In tomorrow's trial, will you advocate for me? No! <laughs> and peace out. Of course I will. It would be an honor. Yeah! Yeah! We're friends! Yeah! Shut up! Stop! Stop! Look at me with those eyes! Those puppy dog eyes of yours! Ah! No! Turn my mind! No! No! No Tixies backsies! We're best buddies now! Yay! I'd hug you if this these bars weren't in our way. Don't you fucking demon touch me! I'm so pleased with Star Hodo. Then my life is in your hands. For Lord Van Seeks, that must have been an incredibly hard thing to ask. Which is why I simply cannot let the man down. Tomorrow, in the old Bailey, I guess my old friend Kazuma. <gasps> oh shit, never mind. Okay, good. I'm glad I kept going then. Oh good, thank God. Thank God. If I'd ended it there, I would have been like all of 10 minutes left of this fucking episode. And then it would have been really awkward. Okay, good. Well, in that case, I could, I think I could definitely squeeze this into a single episode. Damn, okay, cool. I, I, th I thought for certain this would end up being like a, uh, at least a whole nother fucking full episode. We actually did end up doing the, uh, uh, the thing with, uh, uh, Holmes yet. I guess we'll have to do it after probably the first part of this trial. His great deduction, that is. But oh my god, dude, this game is so fucking good. Fuck this. Oh my god, this game's the best. <laughs> this game, this game is so fucking good, man. All this shit feels, it's so, like, satisfying going through this game. Um, I love this twist. I'm sad that Gregson is seems to be dead, right? I don't know if there's going to be some twist that, oh, he faked his death to discover some truth, but I think he's fucking dead. Pretty sure he wouldn't be going this far. But just now, having a Sogi now be up there against us, with us protect with us actually uh, defending Van Zeeks is so cool, man. That's so fucking cool. God, man. Seriously, this game is fucking incredible. I'm absolutely in love with this game so far. I mean, and we're... There's only case four. Like, what the fuck, dude? And Lord knows we've only just scratched the surface of this insane case. But anyway, guys, I hope you all enjoy this episode and are enjoying this game as much as I fucking am. Uh, if you are, please leave a like and a favorite. It really does help me out. And subscribe if you're not already become Piggy Penguin. Oh boy, this LP, where the days are always sunny and the vids are always funny. And as always, guys, till next time, stay classy.